this is Pastor Mickey Stonier, part of the pastoral team at The Rock Church, and I know you're tuning in expecting to see the archive of our message this past Sunday. Well, we're in a part of a series called At the Movies, and as part of the series, we are showing clips of movies that have copyright, and so we're not allowed to play those actual clips. And so I want to give you an overview of the message and also review the scriptures and themes that we covered and invite you just to sit down and tune in to uh, this aspect of our At The Movies. I want to encourage you to pull out your Bible and take some notes because I, I want to encourage you in the challenges that Pastor Miles has given us as a church. The movie was actually Hidden Figures and it deals with themes of racism, prejudice, it's dealing with some gender uh, persecution, gender discrimination, as well as racial discrimination. It's, a, it's an amazing film that I would encourage you to see and also to reflect upon because th those themes go deep into our culture and, and the gospel of Jesus Christ has come to help bring unity, reconciliation, and healing. I also want to encourage you to bring a friend uh, to next week or the week after to the Rock Church. We want to encourage to be encouraged to use this series as an opportunity to invite people that maybe are not familiar with the church because they're going to have a unique experience that's uh, different from a, a regular church uh, situation where you, you just are attending and hearing a sermon. It's going into some aspects of our culture through film. But I do want to draw your attention to a scripture that Pastor Miles emphasized throughout his commentary on the, the movie. It says, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Do not let your lamp be put under a basket, but on a lampstand that it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is out of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And I, Man, it's amazing to realize the God of the universe wants to dwell in the hearts of his people and makes us a light to the world. He transforms us. He gifts us. He calls us to be part of his healing process of the brokenness in the world. And you are his treasure. He's designed you. He has a purpose and a calling for each and every one of us. And sadly, uh, we have forces of evil. We have cultural pressures that try to encourage us to shield uh, the light that we have been designed and who we're meant to be. And I want to challenge you to let your light shine, to be who God has meant you to be. We have the life class here at the Rock Church every week, every Sunday, we uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. at all of our campuses. We want to give you the opportunity to grow in your faith, to realize the hidden treasure of what God has placed in you, that your light would shine. You'd learn your gifts, your calling, about loving relationships, about your design for ministry, the stewardship of your time, talent, and treasure, and then that you would be part of the vision to save, equip, and send. And so uh, the challenge that all of us need to be a witness to evangelize the loss. And so every Sunday we have a class at the Rock Church. You can also contact the church office. You can email. We have it available online that you can Take the life class online and an individual track for you personally to grow in your faith. And then we also want to encourage you to get in a group where you experience the richness of community, that you uh, learn the one another's of Scripture. And so our light shines out in the world, but also even in the church, that we have benefit to build each other up. And sometimes because of our wounds, our scars, our failures, the hurts, we tend to draw back, but the scripture says in Romans 8, 31, we're more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, that God has called you to be victorious in faith. And so our, our pastor wanted to encourage all of us, number one, be clear on who you are called to be and who what you're called to do, that part of your design is a calling 
that you would represent Jesus Christ out into the world as a witness with the gifts and calling that God has for you. Number two, never give up the light. No matter what comes your way, stand strong to know that Christ is your advocate. He's in you. He's with you. He's going to deliver you. And number three, be ready. Every situation, every environment you're in, that he desires you at the workplace, at home, uh, when you're at the gym, whatever you're doing, you are a light. The light is never to go out. And so we need to be instant, in season and out of season. Now, what are the obstacles that come our way? You know, in our original design in Genesis 1 and 2, the Bible says we're created in the image of God, in his likeness, male and female. Men and women are designed to reflect God. And yet, chapter 3 of the Bible, uh, where sin enters into the human race because of uh, fallen humanity, Adam and Eve chose to be their own God in a sense. They didn't obey God. And when sin enters into the world, that's where pain, death, pride, lust, all the sins of the flesh were birthed, that, that they literally died in their relationship to God. And so we have our, really our true self is what God sees and who he's designed us to be. And yet our, our fallen self uh, is where all the pain and the brokenness that really causes us to want to hide and shield from one another. And because of our wounds, we sometimes hurt each other. And so fallen self really gives way to a wounded self. And when people have experienced pain, they sometimes cut off from each other. That's where all the sins of the flesh start to interact with each other. And because of our wounds and our hurts, the tendency is to not only be broken off from each other, but also to hide from God where our light is under a bushel. It's interesting that research shows that because of our woundedness, our brokenness, our pain, that people tend to have what, what they call a, a pseudo-self. We put a false front. Adam and Eve had, had their fig leaves that they hid from one another, their shame, they hid from God, from each other. And so we go from our true self to the wounded, or the, uh, to the fallen self, to the wounded self, to the pseudo self. You know, when I was a young child in elementary school, our teacher had us play 20 questions. On a rainy day, we were indoors at lunch, and uh, one student went out of the room, and the teacher picked an object in the room that the student, when he or she came back in the room, had 20 questions to guess what that object would be. And so this, this was my sixth grade teacher. The object was actually a comb that was in my front pocket. And so a friend of mine was outside of the room. He came back in and starts asking questions and narrowed it down to something about me. And I remember it as clear as day. I was 11 years old. I'm sitting in the second row, middle of the class. And so he knew it was something about me. And so his next question uh, was, is it Mickey's buck teeth? The whole class roared in laughter at my expense. At that moment, I just died inside. I didn't know I had buck teeth. I, I, I didn't know I was ugly. I, I must be dumb. And I had this wound that hit me hard in the pseudo self. So to counteract that, I learned as a child growing up to be funny. Uh, if I could get people to laugh with me, they perhaps aren't laughing at me. And I, I, this insecurity grew in my life. I, in fact, all my pictures from then on, all the way through junior high school, my smiles and all my class pictures were, I just smiled without showing my teeth. When I would laugh, I would cover my mouth. I was so shamed, so embarrassed. And so I covered my pain by being a goofball, doing anything for a laugh. And, and sometimes people have these errant ident identities to cover the pain and the wounds of life, the rejection, the hurts. The true identity of who God has designed us to be, sin and pain and the wounds of life. We, we have all these insecurities that bury, that really cover the trueness of who God has designed us to be. We hide it under a bushel. We have this fake self. And because of that, we interact with people, not with a true, authentic integrity and the care and compassion and love and vulnerability that we can have with each other. But because of our pain, because of our wounds, 
We put the pseudo self there and our false identity. And truly our light is, is hidden. Who God has made us to be in the beauty of who he wants us to be in his likeness. And so as a result, uh, we're separated from people. We're separated from God. Now, uh, a point in time came in my uh, college years where I picked up the Bible and I didn't know God. I wasn't raised in the church, but I, I had a sense there was something beyond me, something more than uh, the physical universe. And I inquired of a friend to explain God and they gave me a Bible and I started reading in the New Testament and the Gospel of Matthew and then I read through Mark and Luke and John and by the time I had read the New Testament, I believed. And what happens when a person comes to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, their true self connects with who God has always seen them to be and we're born again that born again experience where we're, the Bible declares that at that moment when we are made right with God, he says that we're glorified. We're his sons and daughters. We're heirs to the throne of grace. We become who God has always seen us to be because our sin has been, has been washed. Our identity has been restored. And because of that, we are in this process of sanctification is the Bible word, but it's a process of healing and, and making right. Our, our life starts to take a new course. We repent of our sins and the healing starts to take place. Though God sees the finished product, he always already sees us seated in heavenly places with his son. He says we're complete in Christ. All things have been made new. But the challenge is we still live in this fallen, sinful world. And so the whole life of our direction is to become who God has designed us to be, that our true self comes alive. We are born again. And then we're in a process of transformation. Our mind can be renewed, our hearts renewed, and God starts to change us to be more like Jesus Christ. And that's the journey that all of us are invited to be with God, to move past our wounds, past our fallenness, past the, the, the shame and the, all the walls and defenses we create to hide from our brokenness. And truly, prejudice, uh, racism, some of these things, themes cause so much pain, so much hurt, so much that grieves the heart of God. And yet the gospel of Jesus Christ sets us on a course where not only are we to live right and new in our relationship with God, but it brings healing to how we see the world around us. And we have the opportunity to be that light to the world and to be transformed, to be able to speak truth and love and not hide behind our wounds where the fig leaves of our lives and defenses, even our psychology can start to be diminished and start to fade away where the real true self, that which reflects Jesus Christ, it's just amazing the power of the gospel can take a lustful person and through the transformation of simply believing and starting to study the scripture and being part of a community and growing in our faith makes them modest. Or a person who's very stingy or covetousness or, or just greedy transforms them to make them generous. Or a person who's so full of pride, narcissistic, they are humbled and start to become gracious for other people. This is what only God can do. And sure, there's other helps and self-helps and life skill classes and even uh, going to counseling can benefit a person, can help change their behavior, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that will change a person's nature who they're designed to be. Now, sometimes we run into trials, even as believers. In fact, James, James chapter one, verses two and two through four talk about how the trying of our faith will actually produce character and will build us and cause us to grow. And so I wanna encourage you, sometimes when you go through hardships, you may see it as an obstacle, but I would encourage you to realize sometimes those, those painful times could be an opportunity. Uh, to become more and more of the humble servant of Jesus Christ 
who God designed us to be and longs for us to lean and discover the freedom we have from shame, the freedom from condemnation, all the things that are lies of the world, and to be free to become vulnerable, transparent, honest, to be humble, and the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness. His nature becomes our nature through this process of growth and discipleship. And so as I conclude, I, I want to encourage you, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 6, talk about the power of our faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. In fact, uh, without faith, we can't please God. And so no matter what excuses we, we can come up with that maybe limit us from who we really want to be in Christ and who God longs for us to be. It's a process of discipleship, a process of growth. I, I just want to invite you as uh, you tune in on, on, on this link. And though you missed our, our sermon, the heart of, his, of our pastor's message was giving an opportunity for each and every one that, that came to the rock and is coming to the rock uh, to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and begin that journey of transformation to become the true self who God sees you to be. And it's simply ABC. A, admit that you've sinned. Admit that you've been wounded and that you've wounded others. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. We all have failed. And so admit it. And the Bible encourages us when we admit and repent, the, the, the process of, of conversion begins. And B stands for believe. And the Bible's so clear. Believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sins and on the third day rose again. And finally, C, confess. Confess to God and to others that I belong to God. And so I, I want to lead you in a prayer right now no matter where you are on this journey, and maybe, maybe for the very first time, it's an opportunity for you to be made right in your relationship with God, to see the true self come alive, and to see your light become a light to all the world. Or maybe you've gotten off track. You've drifted from your true design. You've drifted in your relationship with God and the hurts and wounds that, you know, sometimes our, our flesh still raises up. I, I want to encourage you as well. Uh, to come to a place of admitting, believing, and confessing. So I'm just simply going to ask you to close your eyes, bow your hearts, and you and God, as if you're standing or sitting before the God of the universe, expressing your heart, and just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I admit I have sinned. I admit that I have fallen from who you have designed me to be. I, I'm not the light that I, I should be. And so I, I believe that Jesus Christ, you died on a cross for my sins. I ask you this day to come into my heart, to cleanse me from all of my sin, and to make me new in Jesus Christ. And I confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so if that's your prayer, I just want you to acknowledge this by saying, Jesus, I believe you. I love you. Now take control of my life. Make me a light to the world, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. You know, we have some links at the Rock Church. If you look on our webpage there to help you grow, just click those links. You can search Grow or search Life Class or Groups. We want to encourage you to grow in your faith. So God bless you, and I do want to encourage you this next week. Bring a friend to the Rock Church. Bring a friend to church who needs to walk into this new identity, the true self, in relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless you. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your savior, I just want you to just look at me right now 
and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death, and I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior. We want to know, and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared, and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you, and we'll see you in heaven.